Hi, I'm Scott Hadley. In this video I want to talk to you about shock absorption in the leg and how you can keep your muscles in a healthy condition so that shock absorption is most efficient. First, let me talk about the shock absorption mechanisms our body has when we run. There are really four main lines of defense against shock. One is the foot, one in the calf, one in the thigh, and one in the hip. Now, I'm going to talk specifically about muscles. Joints are involved in shock absorption too, but primarily it's muscles that control shock absorption. And when muscles dysfunction, that's when shock absorption mechanics go awry and injury occurs. So we're going to start with the foot, and I'm going to demonstrate the mechanics of shock absorption. As the foot hits the ground, all 26 bones in the foot move and the muscles in the bottom of the foot control the movement to prevent the movement from going too far. So as the foot hits the ground, the arch collapses slightly and the ankle rolls slightly inward. This is called pronation. It's a very important mechanism for shock absorption. When it doesn't happen properly, the shock absorption is transferred up the leg and injury can usually occur. The second line of defense is at the ankle. As we land and the foot hits the ground, the knee rolls over the ankle and a muscle in the calf called the soleus stretches very rapidly. In the order of a few milliseconds, this, the ankle will pass from a fairly neutral position to about 30 degrees, inducing a lot of stretch through the Achilles tendon and the soleus. It's the soleus' responsibility to stop the knee from moving forward. If the soleus doesn't function properly, the knee will either buckle or the knee won't move far enough forward and shock absorption is transferred further up the chain and injury can occur there. The third line of defense is in the quadriceps. Again, at initial contact when the foot hits the ground, the quadriceps contract, preventing the knee from bending too far. And as the knee passes through its range of motion from a fairly neutral position to about 30 or 40 degrees of flexion, the quadriceps muscles, while they're contracting, are also elongating or stretching. And they are responsible for the third line of defense against shock absorption. Finally, the hip. As the foot hits the ground and the knee and the ankle flex, the hip also flexes to absorb the shock of impact. So we land, the foot collapses slightly, the ankle moves, the knee moves, and the hip moves in order to absorb shock. The spine is also going to be involved in shock absorption, and I'm going to talk about that in a different video. Uh, but for now, let's just focus on the leg. So these four muscle groups, the muscles in the bottom of the foot, called the foot intrinsics, the soleus, the quadriceps of the thigh, and muscles on the side of the hip called the hip abductors. These are primarily the muscles that are involved uh, in shock absorption as we land. So when those muscles dysfunction, that's when injury can occur. So what I want to show you is how to prevent injury from occurring as a result of muscle dysfunction during initial contact uh, when shock absorption normally takes place. So I'm going to show you how to treat all four of those muscle groups in a way that uh, is pretty safe and effective and quick. We'll start with the foot. Your tools here, by the way, are a standard water bottle or a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, you're going to want to get one. Uh, this one was $2 in a second-hand store. Place the foot on the uh, water bottle with a rolling pin and you're really just going to provide a deep tissue massage to the muscles in the bottom of the foot. Rolling it back and forth over the bottle. You want to push fairly hard. You don't want to put all of your weight through it, but enough so that you can feel the penetration of the uh, water bottle into the, into the sole of the foot. If you roll your foot slightly inward, Right along the inner side of the arch, you can get one of the most important muscles in this shock absorption process. It's called the abductor halysis. 
Wrist roll all the way from the metatarsal heads back toward the heel for about 30 seconds to a minute. This is one of the primary treatments for plantar fasciitis. I'll talk about that another time. So, after you're done rolling the foot, you can start treating the thigh, sorry, the calf.